You're listening to Modern Mail Radio with Jared Zavistoski and Sydney Hall right here on L.A. Talk Radio. What's up, everybody? I'm Jared Zavistoski, and you're listening to Modern Mail Radio. This is all the stuff your mama should have told you and the shit your daddy never knew. And joining me tonight, as always, as always my co-host, Sydney Hall. What's up, Modern Mail Radio? Sydney Hall right here, ready to get into it this oh. Thursday. It's good to see you. And uh, we have uh, our guest, uh, John Avila from Groove International. What's up, John? What's up, everybody? Thanks for having me on board tonight. Uh, my name is John Avila. I work with Groove International, and I just, uh, one, it's good to see you again. Good to meet yeah. you, and thanks for having me on board. Yeah, likewise. Uh, it's funny. We haven't, uh, dude, I haven't seen you in two years. <laughs> it's, it's been a while. I think I weighed 107 pounds the last time you. You're pretty and little. you weigh because, uh, 117, no? Well, 117. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I, I've actually, I gained you, a solid You keep it in uh, shape, 40, brother. You keep it in pounds. shape. Don't yeah. be, uh, don't apologize for keeping it in shape. That's what we're all about, keeping it in shape around here. Mind, body, and soul. Yep, get it So done. Uh, tell us about your company, Groove yeah. International. Um, yeah, well, I think one of the questions you actually asked me recently was uh, how I started the company. And it's actually really funny. I actually started... Uh, Groove International when I was sleeping in my car, of all things. Um, yeah. I think uh, myself as an entrepreneur, like many entrepreneurs, um, they have at least like three, four, if not many mm-hmm. failed businesses before they ever have a successful one or one that even comes close to being successful. And uh, at the time, uh, I worked graveyard shifts at a local hotel uh, and I would write my business plan out while, you know, at my graveyard shift. And That's right. once my graveyard shift was done, I would go out and sleep in my car for about three hours and I'd go to a local coffee shop and literally like hammer out phone call after phone call, all in the hopes that Groove International would eventually uh, go from an idea and eventually become, um, well, eventually it got on the track to become what it is today. And tell us what Groove International is exactly. Groove International is probably best described as a, uh, it's very similar to a concert promotions company. Okay. Um, what we really specialize in is we design uh, live interactive party experiences. What okay. we do is we take live concerts and Vegas style nightlife parties and we fuse them together for one year. Now we, uh, it literally went from this just idea, but now we're doing shows with like House of Blues San Diego, we do House of Blues West Hollywood, we do House of Blues Anaheim and Downtown Disney. And those are just our uh, Live Nation contacts. Of course, outside of that, we're starting to work with like Avalon Nightclub in uh, Mm -hmm. Hollywood proper. So uh, we're best described as a company that fuses the party environment with a live concert environment. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Like I've I've watched you kind of come up in this. I mean, it's been two years since I've seen you, but I've known you for what uh, five years, maybe. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been quite a while. So, how old is this business? Uh, it's actually funny. I, I started this business in uh, I believe it was April of uh, two thousand and nine, and it, and it never really shaped into what it was going to become um, until I would say December of two thousand and eleven. So it's not like it just started off as you know just. That like just popped awesomeness. off. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like, so it really started off as, believe it or not, a very tiny, like, local band showcase at your local okay. dive yeah. bar. Like, right, right. Throw anything at the wall and hope it sticks. It really <laughs> started off as a very tiny project, a lot of trials and errors, a lot of twists and turns. It really didn't really pick up in the direction that it started to head until uh, December 2011, where we made the jump from, like, local band showcase to mm-hmm. interactive party experience. Um, and the just. Did you have a Did you have a partner when you started, or was it just you? It was just well. I mean, I had a, a good team of people that helped me throw the shows. As far as like, yeah. uh, you know, I no, am in, so, on Inception was it just this is your brainchild, you and your car. It was no one, uh, no one else to talk to, no one else, <laughs> to, no one else to confide into, no one else to bitch to. Well, I'm uh, I'm blessed to have great friends, but as far as like the the business itself, yes, it's it, it was my idea, it was my love child, so to speak, and and yes, it, it was my idea. So what attracted awesome. you to like the nightlife business? What was that? Sorry? What attracted you to the like the nightlife business? Oh God! You know what's really funny is I actually got into booking shows originally because believe it or not, I used to be a hip hop artist. Um, ah, <laughs> we, hold up, hold yeah. up, wait, I, where did hold this Hold up, <laughs> see, I, see, Jared, I pulled it out of him. You know, you've known, you've known him for two years, you know what I'm saying? But I know him way. That's why I was letting you run with it. I was like, wow, <laughs> city's city's on point right now. Are we gonna uh, get a freestyle later? The, uh, I, I don't know about that, but I, uh, I actually no, no, no. You have we're, to. We're now. gonna get a freestyle. <laughs> you have later. to. <laughs> maybe, maybe. We're actually gonna get a freestyle later. Yeah. I, uh, I actually, I just wanted to perform, and I kept running into a lot of really uh, shady situations. I'm never one to down talk another business, but I ran into a lot of really 
really bad. Shady promoters uh, that want to pay you with handshakes and, and sodas. And, uh, <laughs> in L.A. So uh, essentially the first show I ever booked was actually me going up to a theater and just being like, look, I understand Social Distortion just played this stage. So it's not like I can't play this stage without selling some tickets. Like, just let me cut out the middleman. Let me know what I need to do. I just want to perform. And the first show that I actually booked was back in 2007 before I started this company. Uh, it was my own, my own <laughs> rap show, uh, so oh. to speak. So, but yeah, yeah, that's how I got into this business. Okay, so that's crazy. So, like, you, it's 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 funny because that's a, how a lot of entrepreneurs start or get into something is they want to showcase their talent in some way, and right. they end up learning the business because no one's letting them through the door. Like Fifty Cent did that shit, right? Didn't he? Wasn't that? I, I don't I don't actually know. Well, the I think story. I think you know all great artists, you know, uh, uh, and entrepreneurs just go through a, a bit of a struggle. And yeah. that's what, you know, that's like, that's the darkness before the light. <laughs> and, and all of us have to, you know, all of us have to go through that, you know, go through I, the, the darkness before the light. Yeah, yeah. No, for right. sure. There's, there's so, there's way too much of that, you know. The and, struggle, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It's, it's the, it's the, no, I don't, I don't want to call yeah, it hardship. Right, I don't want to call it hardship because we don't use, those, <laughs> we, don't use that termi- we don't use that terminology around here. I was going to say. The no, challenges it, that you face, you know, build, uh, build that platform. It's the weight room, build that, man. And build that you base. Got, you got to spend time in the weight room. Build that foundation, wanna, yeah. You know, if you're going to get, if you're going to get good at anything, you have to spend time in the weight room. Absolutely. But, yeah. uh, yeah, uh, Dude, you you have to freestyle for us. I'm sorry, <laughs> like I didn't know. The, before, end, okay, before, maybe, before, before okay, yeah. at the end, okay. Go. You guys heard, you we'll guys heard it, Modern Man Radio. Yeah. At the end, at the end, we're gonna get a freestyle. <laughs> and who knows? Who knows? I may freestyle with him. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm just saying. I'm Uh-oh. just saying though, it What's may happen. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> um, I'm gonna regret. Now, now he's just gonna be sweating bullets the whole show. <laughs> 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 Throws um, the whole show off. Yeah, that's I, all I, he's thinking about. I do believe that you know, well, a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, a lot of them see a service, they feel like they can make it better, so you know, and they, and they jump on that. So there, there's a lot of heart that went into uh, building this company. Yeah. And uh, and you know, I mean, it's it's been a wild ride. I mean, it's it, you never go from point A to point B. Mm-hmm. It's point A. There's a revised plan A. You know, you, <laughs> yeah, that's you mess right. Up a lot. So Groove really started in 2009 to answer your question, and then you know we made the jump into interactive party around 2011, late 2011, and then eventually started seeing the bigger things happen, like the bigger contracts and like the bigger events that we've been doing today. And so some, what? Yeah, oh, go, go for it. So uh, what do you, what do you think the turning point was in uh, in the company? Um. God, it's it's I don't know. There's just so many twists and turns in right, any business. Of course. I mean, it's again, it's no, and, and and I don't like using the word successful. I think it's a very pretentious word to say, but like, I, I believe that coming from the man in the tie, and, <laughs> <laughs> I believe and the that conk in, business, in his hair, right? It's um, very pretentious. Is uh, any business is just it's not just a straight street. Like mm-hmm. you're you're going to mess up. And if there's any entrepreneurs out there, like it, that's the exact thing. Like it's it's literally. It's about failing as hard as you possibly can, yeah. learning from that, mm-hmm. and applying that to the next business over that you start. Over and over and over and over and over. And it's not even failure at that point. Like, it's funny because I, yeah, I, I used to say the same thing. I'd be like, you know, failure. It's, it's, it, it's I not, call it mistakes. You, it's just like, yeah. you fuck it, you fell down, and you got to get back well, up. I call, it, like, I call like, it mistakes. You know what I'm saying? It's mistakes. Yeah. You have a mistake. So yeah, you know, yes, it is. You know, it's yeah, just a mistake. Exactly. It's a mistake. So, you know, so, all right. Chill out. I we're like gonna that. take this over. <laughs> I like that. And before Groove, I did have a company where I failed pretty miserably, and I and I mean like laughably so. But uh, you know, I, I would. You were take probably it back. fifteen at the time. <laughs> no, I was, I was, a little <laughs> was than the that, lemonade stand. It didn't go too well. Exactly. Right. <laughs> it's, uh, too much sugar in the lemonade. Yeah, it doesn't go too well for no. a lot of us. Yeah. But uh, you know, I wouldn't take it back for anything. You know, I mean, if it wasn't for the fact of that business failing miserably, you know, I wouldn't have Groove. And you know, I don't know what the future holds, but you know, I, I look at everything as a learning experience. Yeah. So tell us some of the you know the big artists that you've uh, that you've worked with. Uh, you know we've always <laughs> impress with, us with right now. <laughs> with uh, with right now, Groove's been really focused on our interactive party scene, which has been absolutely uh, to put it in uh, a perfect example is we had a show at House of Blues San Diego where we rented out their two uh, 300 capacity nightclub rooms. Mm-hmm. And we had like live bands all night on both stages, live DJs that spun before and between and after the bands. We had go-go dancers, photographers, models, hosts. We dumped like two dozen beach balls into the audience into like the stages when like halfway through the show. And we, oh. didn't, we didn't even have a headliner on this show and we actually ended up selling it out uh, halfway through the so event. you guys basically and create like a concert venue within a club right so it's it's creating this live concert environment there's still live rock concerts or metal or whatever we're doing that night mm-hmm. but we're creating this vegas style nightlife inside of downtown san diego or we did a pirate party in downtown disney for no reason other than to 
do a pirate party in downtown Disney. <laughs> right. And it got, it got <laughs> to a point where they wouldn't let more people into our show just because it, it became that popular of a thing. So it's really making the rock concert uh, the cool thing to go to. So you're innovating. You're innovating in the, the natural business we're, model. We're becoming innovative with even something as simplistic as live rock concerts. Or now we're even doing a little bit of hip hop, which is weird that we, we don't, for the longest time, we, I wouldn't do hip hop, even though that's kind of how I got into it. Yeah, what's up uh, with that? Hip hop is Tell a us very, really why. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't hold your tongue on this one either. I love hip hop. Hip hop is an incredible Doesn't matter genre if a black man where... sitting next to you, just don't hold your tongue. Come on. <laughs> hip hop is an incredible <laughs> genre where you can tell a story in each different so hip hop's an amazing genre. Um, Was it because of the what kind of crowd it attracts? It's spoken poetry. Not, yeah, not yeah, not no, really. I've heard that. Because I used to film for Hollywood Music TV and it's the same thing. Like uh, it's, that's why I was told that we didn't film uh hip hop shows. It was because of the, the, the element, the crowd, you really? know. Really? Right. Yeah. You well, get different types of hip-hop crowds, though, don't you? We do, and, and we do hip-hop in yeah. San Diego now. The thing with hip-hop is um, hip-hop is a very competitive, best described as a sport. It's about who can play with the words and match the best, who can do the most syllables, who can tell the best story, who's got... Uh, just basically, it's a very competitive sport. That's the best way I could put it. So, what I matching just wits and bravado. What I just described that we did in San Diego was this big hippie environment. Everybody came to party mm -hmm. feel. So it's very hard to take that competitive sport ah, and put okay. it into a very mm. um, let's all you know kind of like a burning. You do like a Burning Man thing. Everyone's kind of in the everybody's free yeah. love, free love. Exactly. So it's and we've started to do it in San love Diego. We've had a good <laughs> result. With I don't know, that. A whole lot. Matter of fact, it cost me thirty dollars last. <laughs> but yeah, um, it's very true. But yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's been a really interesting experience. So tell us about the um, tell us a little bit more about the environment you create. So it's like the between the the live music and the DJ is it kind of like a seamless movement that you do in terms of the music, or is it kind of start stop in terms of okay, this is the band that's getting on now, or kind of like your DJ's playing and all of a sudden you got this live band on the stage just right. rocking out and like, oh, it's a live band on the stage. You know? <laughs> every every event that we do is different. I mean, I know that we do a lot of, um, the, the event that I described that we did in San Diego, excuse me as I don't burp into your microphone, <laughs> um, but the event that we do in cool, San you just, Diego. You blow it down uh, and out your Just nose. don't burp between your freestyle later. That's right? in the book. Yeah. <laughs> that's actually my, in that my book. I teach people how to burp around around women. Nice. That's, that's, uh, there's, you got to learn that. It's, it's in there. It's very important. It's, yeah. No, it's, it's hugely important. I mean, you're out, you're drinking, you got a beer in your stomach. You just got to burp. burping around people. Yeah. You know, just, you know, like, you know, no one wants to, you know. This is a social skill that everybody needs to learn how to do is how to, how to do, around people, how to you do know? a passive burp. You just don't fart around people. You like walk away or you got, you got to do it in motion. Well, 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 <laughs> well, well, I'm just saying. You got to hit a corner or something and be like, oh, boom. I can't just get up right now That's a <laughs> and go away and fart. <laughs> I can't do it right passive now. Passive burp. I don't think I've ever. Yeah, because I mean, like, look, you it's got, just you like got, a passive fart, burping and farting. Same you got, you got, a, you got, you got the the burp where you're like, okay, I'm gonna aggressively burp. I'm gonna put it out there. The whole yes. world's gonna hear my burp. I'm gonna right. speak. with And the then burp. you've got the burp where you like turn around to do it, which is like a shy burp. You know, it's like a I'm burping. I'm not really hiding it. All right. You know, or inverted I'm, burp where you burp and then swallow the burp. Yes. Or you do yeah. a passive burp, which is like over your shoulder where you don't really want somebody to see it. So it'd kind of be like. Like when, well, you're, when, you when you're checking your, your pants or something and you're like... When you hold your stomach you know? really tight yeah. and you, kind of just let it, you just let it out slow. <laughs> or you burp <laughs> into your collar. <laughs> and look to the guy next to you as if everyone's going to think it's that guy. <laughs> <laughs> right, that did that and turn your nose up like it's not yours. Uh, my only question right now is how we haven't been friends longer. <laughs> All right, but, uh, my bad. Where were we? Um, <laughs> right. We were talking about passive burping. Passive burping. We're, we're, okay. we're, talking yeah. about, we're talking about the seamlessness. Well, the, the uh, seamlessness of. Your oh yeah. Shows so and... the events are definitely advertised as a whole. Like we don't advise just or advertise. Well, depending on the event, of course, if we're booking openers for a headliner, it's a little bit different. But uh, with our events, the ones that Groove International has become known for is they're advertised as an entire event. Like we've done the Pirates Booty Ball. You know, we've done mm -hmm. the Toga Party, which is called Heart of Rome. We just I've heard of yeah. I've heard of that. Um, you need to be invited mm -hmm. to that one next time. The uh, Heroes versus Villains like theme party. That yeah. So it's been. That's you. Guys. Guys, that's right. That is yeah. you guys. That's we're the, that is we're the crazy yeah. ones. So that's right. Yeah, but yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Um, very just incredible. It's been a, it, it, I should say um, eerie to watch it grow from the idea that it was into what it is now. And it's eerie. It's even Explain more eerie. that for our viewers. I listeners. Again, I, I, I strongly believe that pride comes before the fall. So I, I, I'm not a very prideful person. But what I will say is that it's just been interesting. Like you know, it seems like just yesterday. 
you know, you're uh, you're in a coffee shop hammering out phone calls, telling everybody, I'm going to build this, I'm going to build mm-hmm. this. And <laughs> and now that it's there, and, and it's only, even though that it's there, it's, it's you can tell it's only in its beginning stages. We're expanding into Riverside soon. Eventually, we're mm-hmm. going to be in Las Vegas, you know, and now we're expanding to multiple locations from West Hollywood to Hollywood proper. You know, it's, it's, it's just this really eerie feeling. I don't want to say prideful, but... It, it's been interesting to watch it grow from what it was. Just Live in the idea. moment. It's kind of almost it. unbelievable to see it go from, yeah. yeah um, well, and, from and your car, from your car to the bar. Yeah. So it's, um, from your car to the bar. <laughs> I'm trying to get him ready. I'm trying to get him ready for this freestyle, you know, uh, God. shooting these little daggers in his head. I'm trying to get him ready. I'm trying to you know, and, help him out. And speaking of being humble, cause like it's, there's a lot of things that I've learned in this business. And I know mm-hmm. like one of the things that you're asking me is like, what were some of the business, just the entrepreneurship mentalities that you're asking me. And mm-hmm. um, I know, I know one of those. Uh, well, first and foremost is uh, uh, you, first rule is you just never down talk another business. That's mm-hmm. like one of the first business rules. That Hell I go yeah! By. Um, Hell yeah! Because by doing so, you're letting your client know that you're afraid about the other guys. Do we have so, an applause know? effect, like a stand up ovation effect? You know, <laughs> that we can do. Can you slide then, that in uh, there somewhere? Like, yeah. Well, no. I mean, that's kind of what it, it's. For, or you, or you create a radio show and you invite all your competition onto the show. I like well, that. Better. But the thing about it, it, <laughs> it, it just also it also speaks to. It also speaks to who you are and how you feel about yourself. You know, right. you, you never need to put someone else down to feel great about yeah, yourself. Yeah, you know, it's exactly. funny. We were talking about this earlier about, uh, you know, talking and dreaming. And it's like, man, I remember we, we back in the day when we knew each other, you know, there was so much talk at these parties. And there was so much, you know, I would sit there for hours and hours and hours and talk about what I was going to do with my life. Right. And now that I'm actually doing sh- shit every day, I am much too busy to talk about anything. I, I don't yeah, care. It's, <laughs> it's just, you know, it's, it's, it just evolves your mind to where, you know, you encompass what you do and you respect and, 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 and love what other people do because, yeah. you know, that, that is the movement, you know, because you get your ideas from seeing other people also. Right. Yeah. You and know, they, so, and you move, and you move that energy towards you and then you express. Yeah. There's a lot to be said for inspiration. There's, there's a whole lot to be said to, uh, about surrounding yourself with like-minded people. Right. We were talking about this earlier. And but also, but also you just know that. You know, any business you can down talk, you've probably in, been in that position also. Whatever you're gonna say about another business or another person, you know what I'm saying? You've probably, yeah. you know, you've probably had a bit at fault the same way. So you know, really, you know, kind of, kind of, you know, the, every finger you point out is three well, fingers yeah, pointing I mean, back at you. That's life in general. It's really easy to right, exactly to, to talk shit about anything or anyone that you don't understand. But when you're out there and you're hustling, you're grinding every day. And you're like, man, why would I talk shit about them? Like, I know how that feels. I well, know how I know how that feels. Yeah. So why would I? Why would I? You know, put that judgment on that when I know how empathy. I, or there could be a reason that we don't know yet. Is there? Is there? Is there like a second part to that? That we're oh no, just I, we're just we're <laughs> going back and forth about something. <laughs> I, I just got like a yeah, my bad. The first rule of business: you never down talk another business. Second rule of business: you never talk it while you're drunk. And then like, there's another actually really funny. Ooh, sorry. Just don't talk when you're drunk. A funny thing actually. <laughs> That's a was good rule. You guys had me on your site as CEO, and I and I hate that term. Yeah, he no, made I hate it. that. I know. I'm. I, prob- and, I promise you, I'm so with you right there. And I'll explain why. Um, and I'm glad that you're with me on this. And and don't. I'm just humbled to be here. So I'm not down talking the show at all. But. What uh, perfect example? If Jared and I both go to I don't know Live Nation, uh, mm-hmm. just to name a big music company, and we both own say concert promotions companies, and say we both wow them in the meeting, they're going to only pick to work with one of us. I wow them, Jared wows them. They're both completely fascinated with both of our companies. We're there, we're on our A game, and we just talk about how badass our companies are, and they're just like, wow, we're going to have to really think about which guy we choose. It's time for us to hand them our business card. So say we get to the end of the meeting. They want to work with both of us, but they can only pick one. If Jared hands them his business card and it says CEO, they're going to think, okay, cool. Well, we could judge his entire business off of him because he's the CEO. But if I follow that up by handing them a card that says analyst, they're going to be like, holy shit, that's what their analyst talks like? God knows what his manager talks like and who the hell owns the company. Right, exactly. So you're almost in a humble way down by downplaying yourself you're making yourself seem bigger oh okay um, and so that's what it is a little trick of the I, trick. I don't mm. think and i mean i'm sure that this uh well i've uh, used that trick i'm like i never i've owned a plenty of businesses and i've never put you know never put any titles on them i just sydney hall i you're tell speaking, people i talk shit well, for a living a name, you're, so. speaking <laughs> <Sydney> <laughs> hall, you're speaking sydney to sydney hall you're speaking to sydney hall what do you do and, i talk shit you know to get this moving you talk to me and no one else you know so well it's yeah, funny sometimes i have to think also, about it but also but also i think you know I always think of my businesses and the people I work with as a team anyway. Right. Yeah. So it kind of puts, you know, Absolutely. I always tell people, go out there as if this is your company too. Right. You know, whoever works yeah. you know, works with me, go out there and this, this is your company. So take pride and take ownership of it. 
So therefore, you know, you work, you know, you work as you know, it's yours. Yeah. And no one works harder for themselves. You know, everyone mm-hmm. works harder for themselves. The other thing too is though, no That's one will true. ever work as hard for your business as you will. Like, there's nobody right. that will chase your dreams as fast or as hard as you will. So you give them a and little, you give them, you make them feel like they part of the company and that's their company. And maybe they work a little harder. It's a good point. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's how co- corporate right. cultures have succeeded another little, for years. Another little trick, yeah. You know, but that, it's funny because I never, I, I, I get, I get the, the founder thing, get the downplaying it thing. That's that's smart. I don't think I've told I, anybody that I've owned the company for a long. I'm sure people have eventually figured it out, but I mean, because I mean, signing the checks, I'm sure they're like, oh, he's signing my paycheck. Like, okay. Yeah, and I'm hiding from the IRS. Yeah. So I well, I mean, you always wore a suit. You're like, you're notorious for for being all suited up. That's true. I mean, I. It, I mean, I have nothing to say that you're absolutely right. <laughs> you, you look like the CEO. You're yeah, the guy true. standing over there in the corner shaking everybody's hand. That's, yeah, it's true. I, I like, yeah, argue. you can't argue with that. So what's but, the third but, I mean, thing? I don't go out and say that. So, oh, no, there's just plenty of things that I've learned. I mean, I've, I've, uh, I, I mean, I'm no better than anyone else. I'm just some dumb homeless kid who didn't want to be homeless anymore. Um, mm, and how's I, and that very, dumb? Okay, maybe not dumb. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, you know, I... I, I've just learned a lot, you know, and, I, and I'm sure there's chapters and books more to learn, you know, as this company well, gets even bigger. Know. That's funny. I've, I've actually Life never heard ends. That, it just keeps going. So that as a catchphrase, you got to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. You know, you got to you, you got to hit. A well, point. that is actually been a, it's been a catchphrase for, for a long, long for yeah. a long time. Shut up. <laughs> it usually comes just, during, usually comes during Black History Month. Just <laughs> 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 I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Wait, where did that come from then? <laughs> um, I believe if I'm I hopefully I'm not wrong. You know what I'm saying? I'm preaching. Yeah, exactly. It. Sojourner Truth. Maybe we'll yeah. see. I'm, I'm, gonna sick, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm, I'm, like, <laughs> sojourner, I'm like I hope I'm right about this, right? Ooh, this is my history. Be seeding me. So, 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 so tell us. So now, okay, let's let's get to nitty gritty. What's up with the women in the nightlife business? What's you know you're okay. in this you're in this crazy world and you're at the top of it and you are the man. What's up with the women? Uh, well, thank you for the kind words. First and <laughs> foremost, I, I do appreciate that. Um, my dating life or my non yes. my non existent dating life. <laughs> <laughs> um, I get I get to, I'll get to that later with you, but go, keep going. I. Uh, <sighs> I, I, well, I, I wouldn't say that uh, the industry that I'm in really in, interferes with the dating life. Um, I would say it's more so just the life of like an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. But I mean, literally running through my day, I wake up at 8 a.m., I answer emails and send out contingency information until noon. From noon to 8, I'm making out or uh, making phone calls mm-hmm. all day. At 8.30 p.m., I go either hit the gym or I go out for a run. I'm I know you are ridiculously hard to get a hold of. Or I am. Uh, by, I'm usually back by 10, and then I prepare myself for the next day, do it all over again, and then show weekends are even Can't crazy. even contact myself sometimes. I'm so busy. <laughs> so like, I, I don't know. Like, I... I'm the type of person that 50 years from now, I want a building with my name on it. And mm. I don't mean like a tiny little building in East L.A. Right. I mean, I want a building one story higher than Trump's next door to his with a greater than symbol right in between. And I have never <laughs> – I have dated that's some – right. No, that's right. That's right. <laughs> thank you. And, and I've dated some phenomenal, just amazing, absolutely uh, incredible women. But I have never met anybody – on this earth that has made me want to take over the world more than I already do. Mm. And I know that's a high bar to set, um, but I'm sure once I meet the right person, you know, I'll probably go. Uh, but the ladies must be shooting that. themselves at you in the, in, in, in the parties. What's up, man? <laughs> well, I, maybe I'm Turn just down a, city? Maybe I'm just not a bright guy. Maybe I don't <laughs> see it. Uh, you know, I mean, I've... Um, you must dabble a little I bit. I can tell you what it is in a I've second, dated, but let's pause this. Uh, yeah. Fanny Lou Hammer. Fanny, oh, Fanny Lou Hamer, yes. Fanny, yes, it was yeah. Fanny Lou Hamer, yeah. yes, it was, yes. So, you're, so Fanny Lou I'm Hamer, with you if I Fanny Lou Hamer, <laughs> yeah. like, I'm yeah. sick and tired of being sick and I'm tired. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yes. Yeah. No, but I mean, I love that. It wasn't that. Sojourner Truth. I was totally off with that, but it was And somewhere. it's like, once you get on that, once you get on that, that stroke, you know, and you start making moves and stuff, it's so hard to let that go. It becomes a relationship all on its own. And people compare, you know, uh, a re- uh, entrepreneurship or building a business like it's your baby. He and Googled that, by the way. He just didn't answer that. He What's Googled that? that, by the way. Yeah, of course you he Googled could. that. He Googled that, by the way. I mean, yeah, he no, just, I know. Just, told just, me over here. It just pop in his brain like, oh, I got the answer right, now. Yeah. Right? No, no, no. No, no, we, we knew. We knew. <laughs> it was well implied. Okay, love you. Uh, set up. Sorry. Just because uh, we, we don't want you to, to, to cut you out here. You're totally good. Thank it's, you, uh, by the way. It's funny, sometimes people wear green in here and we end up cutting them out. But um, I wanted to, uh, I just really wanted to get down to that struggle and that, you know, because there are so many people I know that like, 
Like, I remember like it was yesterday being at that place where I'm like, why and how and how do I do this? And, you know, and I was just sitting there and I'm like, I'm struggling and I don't know where and how to publish my book. I don't know who to go to, where to turn. And it was just like the key all along was just motion. It was just get the fuck up and start doing it. And, you know, like I'm, I'm sure you're the same way. You're very, very analytical. You know, like we were talking about this earlier and how, you know, everything that comes into your life now is you're very, you organize it, you know, perfectly. Right. And I, I think a lot of business owners are like that. But, you know, to have that kind of brain where you want to structure everything and everything's just massed all over the place. It's like somebody threw you in a pit of Legos and said, build your way out. And right. you're like. How? Like, how do I build my way out of this? I don't know how to do it. Well, yeah, you got to jump in the deep end. You know, I always say, you know, yeah. like, if you want to learn how to swim, jump in the deep end. Or, 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 get, or, get, or get pushed. Yeah, or, or go in the shallow <laughs> end and learn to doggy paddle, but just get in the fucking pool. Yeah. You know, and a lot of people like think Commit that they, they have to, you know, they're like, oh, I've got to swim all day. I've got to fix, you know, it's like, no, dude, just fucking get, get it an hour a day. Get it three hours a day. Go in that pool and just get wet. First, put some water on your legs. Just get wet. You know, and yeah. then you you can sit with your feet in the pool. Just get wet. Well, yeah, yeah everyone has going. to go. Everyone has to go at their own pace. And yeah, everyone's everyone's pace is different well, because a lot of a lot of times people look at other people and right. say, okay, I need to be there, then that, you know, and, and I need to be that. But yeah. everyone has their little own little pace. I, I think based another on their huge problem is and people where they come do. from, and, you know, and what and who they are. So you have to you have to know thyself yeah. and right. you know know who you are to actually. Well, and a out. lot of people don't know who they are. And I think another huge... That's the first thing. Yeah. So the, first, the first rule of anything. Know who the hell you are. I don't know, think a, I don't think a lot of people... Know your capabilities. Know your downfalls. Know, you know, know, know yeah, those Yeah, but that things. comes through experience. Sometimes it's that experience that shapes people into understanding who well, they are. Well, if you're alive, you're going to have some experiences. But I think it's really important. <laughs> I'm like, um, I'm like, it's how you embrace those experiences. And, you know, if you're alive in the world, you're going to have some experience. So right. it's yeah. how you embrace them and, and how you pay attention to, to those things that you have of course and that's important too um i, I just, the littlest I, thing can teach you i a really whole lot. i really want to get this out before i forget it because mm. i do this all the time there's just so much information going through but uh, jumping in the deep end we we're talking about the pool and when yeah. you jump in the deep end i think a lot of people jump in the deep end and they drown and it's like you know they're they're like okay fuck it fuck it fuck it i'm gonna do this and they get in there and they they jump in the, the deep end they drown and and somebody pulls them out and they go i'm never doing that again and it's like, well, that's what I was. Well, that's exactly what I was going towards. I was like, you know, know thyself, know thy capabilities, know what you know, know what you can do, know what you can't do at that point in time. So it's like, okay, maybe I'll start at the three feet joint and swim over to the deep end rather than just dive yeah. in that joint. So you have to know what you're capable of. I think I don't even think that a person should really be concerned with what they're capable of. I think that a person really just needs to be concerned about motion. Get in there and do it because you can well, surprise right. yourself. How many times have you surprised yourself? Right, you can't. You, you can't know? surprise yourself. But at the end of the day, you can drown too. There's a there's a good quote. <laughs> you uh, can drown too. There's a good quote which you were just uh, talking to me about, like how I've got a million and one quotes yeah. on our social networking pages. But it, it's it's perfect for this. I mean, it's only it says uh, only those uh, who will risk going too far are the only people who will find out how far they can possibly go. <sighs> and it's it's all about that. Yeah, I mean, if if you're innovation. not if you're <laughs> not afraid of the speed you're going, then you're not going fast enough. You know, like some of the yeah. best mm -hmm. business deals that Groove International got into mm -hmm. were ones that I, I remember being in the car with my friends, not the car that I was sleeping with. This is after the company started doing well. <laughs> I, I would be in a car with my friends just talking to them like, oh my God, like this is terrifying. Like if I, if I do this, like it's gonna be, the outcome's gonna be phenomenal. Yeah. But, if, but if, I, if I botch this, you can swear. But, but, uh, okay. So if I, if I botch this, like, we're going to lose a lot of money. And like, the thing is, it's just like it's those people that are willing to jump and just jump as far as they possibly can are going to find out how far they can jump. There is nothing with which every man is so afraid as seeing how enormously much he is capable of doing and becoming. So and, that's, and, well, and that brings up a good point because a lot of people, you know, they, they, they sabotage themselves because, yeah. of, because of that fear. You know, See, I never had a problem jumping into the deep end. I had a problem uh, sabotaging myself because of fear. And that was something that I really, uh, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> the idea that because you, you jumped in the deep into, end and yeah. then swam, like, let me get the hell out of here. Yeah, and, but then you think that you can't swim. And you tell yourself in your mind, you're like, oh, well, I did that once and I can't swim. And that's just not, you know. So you like, don't jump back in. Yeah, but that that's that's that fear. It's not it's not knowing yourself because the truth is you could you can learn to swim. It's knowing that that's possible. That thing is possible. It's the fear that develops from failure. It's right. the fear that we hold right, and on that has to. to that, like when I say capabilities, you know, we're capable of everything. You know, we you know we, we're we're we're, we're strong. Yeah. We're a strong species. And the capabilities we have, like you know, 
it's 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 the stepping stones. It's like okay, yes, I am capable of everything. You know, human beings are you know are, are extraordinary beings. But at the same time, you know, you have to you have to understand the walk. You have to understand the steps. You know what I'm saying? Okay, maybe you know I'm three years old. Maybe I can't jump five steps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know where you're know where you're at in your development. Know where you're at in your development. That you know what I'm saying? No, and that's and that's and that's rule number one for me. Know where you're at, and then your pace. You can set your pace. Yeah. You can, know you how can, you learn. You can, you, can, you, you can get your groove. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Genius. <laughs> get your groove in a national. You and I are going to get along just fine. <laughs> by the way. Well, in regards to what we're all capable of, I mean, not to sound cheesy, but like my motto on life is just embrace the world as you see it can be. Yes. And I mean, we literally live in a place where I was talking about having a building 50 years from now. We live in a place where I can make that happen. We live in a place where I, you can sign the fronts of checks, not just the backs of them. You mm -hmm. can you can literally be the person that society you can sign is the fronts training of you checks, not just the back of them. them. <laughs> oh, oh man, I got another one. You should. You, you know what? You guys <laughs> just got, became friends on Facebook, right? 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 Oh, you yeah. wait. His quotes come through. Oh, I don't know, three, man. four times a day, and they're just oh, perfect. Man, every every day I'm on there liking his shit. I'm trying to tell you right there. You can sign the fronts of checks, not the backs of them, Holmes. Oh gosh. That's going uh, in the freestyle. That's going, what? So but, but you could literally be the person that society is training you to work for. You could be sleeping in your car one day, and then, you know, 50 years later, you could be a billionaire for all you know. 10 years later, you could be a billionaire for all you know. And and it, that's what absolutely fascinates me. Like, we, we the the potential of each and every person on this planet and is I, and absolutely I, and You know, I agree, because I like, and that's why I like reading, you know, watching biopics about, you know, great businesses or reading, reading their books. Because you see, you know, you see them from when they're just like you. And you see their movement, which you know, which bring yeah. you know, which puts you on their level. It's like, hey, you know, when I watched the Steve, Steve Jobs movie, I was like, wow, he was just some dude walking around barefoot, you know, barefoot, you know, yeah. doing some doing some drugs. Not that I do drugs, but you know, he was just right. he was just he was he was just <laughs> a regular, he was a regular guy. Right. And you see that regular and you see that movement to, you know, that that great potential. Yeah. It, you know, it personalizes it for you. I think totally. So Absolutely. I, you know, I do, I just suggest people that you know. You know that want to be you know in, in business and want to be great. You know they learn from what has come before. You know everyone, a lot of people are like, well, I'm gonna do it my way. I'm on my own. No, get out there, get the information, research, and just look at what humanity has offered before you, and accept and accept and embrace. What's that, that. saying? Uh, don't try to invent the wheel. <laughs> right. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. Exactly. Right. But make it no. Make it make it a make it a Pirelli. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> make it a Pirelli, but don't try to reinvent the wheel. You know? And it's funny because that's something I struggle with too. You know, you want you have this idea and you want to make this thing in this way that's just so uh, you know outlandish and crazy. And it's like, who's to say that you can't? You know, who's to say that you can't make you know that in that way? Or you know, or make it? something different than a wheel that does the same thing. Exactly. It does does something greater. Exactly. But I think that a lot of people end up. Uh, you know, the, the lessons, the drive that comes from, you know, getting into something and then building on top of something, uh, it's, a, it's a little bit safer of a bet than you would, uh, you know, try and reinvent a wheel. And the type of drive that it takes to actually reinvent a wheel, you know, you're going to spend years and years and years and years and years developing this thing. And nobody's ever going to say, hey, that's awesome. <laughs> it's, like, it's, like, it's like, don't be don't be afraid of the lows. Embrace them. Love them. Yeah. Love the, love them love them even more than the highs. <laughs> you know, love you know, embrace them even more than the highs that you have because you get more you know, you'll get more than so the lows and people look at the lows like it's a problem. It's like curling you know, up lows, under a blanket lows, on a rainy day. You the know? lows help you it's see nice. the problem. They actually like they, they give you great insight into the problem. That's what the lows yeah. do. So you actually, never learn anything I'm by like, winning. It, it broadens it broadens it broadens your sight. So it's like, yeah. oh, okay. So embrace those lows. Have as many as you want to. You know what I'm saying? Because your eye, your 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 vision becomes clearer and clearer. And the more your vision becomes clearer, the more you can journey into the future and become a great person. Yeah. Well said. We yeah, just, we just keep that's, that's, hey, that's just my take on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, John, where is Groove International headed now? What's What are the plans for the future? What are you doing? Uh, uh, Groove is just, it never ceases to amaze me what, it, what uh, Groove International has been doing. So, obviously, we've got our... Uh, events that we're very well known for that uh, we're doing at House of Blue San Diego, Anaheim, West Hollywood. We're doing Avalon nightclubs, Bardot now, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. We're starting up there. 
That's next um, to Avalon, right? Right. So that, well, the, the well, roof, the, yes. I believe the third floor with the open air roof thing. Okay. And um, and then yeah, so I mean, Groove itself, like I know that this upcoming year uh, we're we're expanding into Riverside. I know there's talks about us eventually expanding into Las Vegas this year. Uh, which is going to be pretty interesting, uh, just because it's a completely yeah. different demographic. Aside from the live events, because I know that the events are constantly expanding. Like we're actually tripling the amount of events that we do in San Diego over the course of the next three months, uh, and the same thing in LA. Um, but aside from that, I know part of the company is branching off into an entire modeling department, oh, okay. um, which is just going to be absolutely fascinating. Um, modeling, huh? Yeah, so we, we, we have a lot of uh, dancers and models that yeah, we employ right. at a lot of shows, and naturally that just spawned off uh, and just kind of created its own thing. It was nothing that we ever intended, nothing right. we ever was, were looking to do. Um, kind of became, became part of the machine. That you right, are, exactly. That you are so, doing. so part of it's branching off into an entire modeling department. There's, of course, other bigger uh, things that Groove's looking to do. So it's, I think it's going to be absolutely fascinating to see where Groove International is going to be. So how big is the team? How now, big is the team? From now. It's, um, you know, one of my business mentors always told me, keep it small, keep it all. Mm -hmm. uh, and for the longest <laughs> time, I kept it as me until I quickly realized that I couldn't just have it just be me. <laughs> Yeah, we were talking about this the last time I actually saw you. We were out on my patio, I think. And we, were, we were. It was like the one time I'd seen you. You know, it had been two years before that, and I was like, "Dude, I never see you. I miss you." And we're like hugging, and you know, we're sitting there, we're having that bro moment. We're like, "I miss you so much." And you're like, "I miss you too," and then you're like, "You just, you just, you sat down in like this heap," and you're like, "I just need." I need another me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I need well, another me. If anybody yeah. I say that all the time. Themselves, you if there's a bunch of me's, millions with other I'm the white version of you. <laughs> <laughs> that's, <laughs> just, yeah, that's true. I have another me. Yeah. The, I, uh, found, I found me. Nice. Well, glad you guys have that. I'm still right. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> the, uh, so, so, of course, I'm working for the company. Uh, you know, uh, I'm putting in a lot of hours every single day into it. Um, there's no, in an entrepreneur's mind, there's no such thing as a day off. Like, oh, I no. don't have a day off. Um, except for when my friends Working on Friday home. nights. Woo! <laughs> no rest for the wicked. Except when my friends know? at home kidnap Sleep is the cousin of death. Take one. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> but we've got we have a we have a lot of contractors right now from stage managers to mm -hmm. point men yeah. to point women who like actually manage. I suppose to be a lot of subcontracting. There's a lot of people that work for this company that are literally contractors running all the shows. There's no way I could do run like create the shows and run them at the same time. I go to most of the shows. I go to 99 percent of the shows. And you don't get um, no shorties, man. What's that, up? Come well, it's on. not what I'm there for. I'm there to build an empire, not not. Well, I have a model. I have a model. I have a model about that, and I've always lived by. Never get high in your own supply. You know what? <laughs> I'm with you there. Uh, I thought different. they just called it "Don't <laughs> Shit Where You Eat," Kings, but the, "Don't uh, Shit Where You Eat" don't get high when you're on, on your own supply. Uh, although I'm very happy to say now that as many contractors as we have, and we do have a lot of them, uh, we we also are now hiring uh, actual like hourly, uh, part time, and okay. full time employees over the course of this upcoming year, which is going to be very interesting because it's a totally different, you know, rather than all the people that show up to the shows to work, this is a literal like administrative staff that's now going to be built over the course of the next year. So. Um, so yeah, the Groove, it's just, again, uh, it's going to be amazing to see what it is like two years from now, let alone five, ten. Um, I'm absolutely fascinated by just watching it grow. Remind so. me to hit you about that after the show, because I think I know some people that might be interested in working with you. Yeah, the, you know what's but. weird? So running, speaking of like how the entertainment nightlife like mm -hmm. changes things in your life. So if you go to our website, you see nothing but people like partying, dancing, drinking, listening to rock music or EDM and dancing. And, like It's just party. But... The administrative side of things is literally phone call after phone call after phone of call course. after phone call, like from talking to big corporate companies to talking to independent, hardworking musicians. Like it's literally hard work all day long. So whenever I try to hire somebody, they look at the website and they see all the parties. They see pictures, the parties. And they're like, oh my God, like I totally want to party uh, uh, every day. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> and I'm just like, and I immediately think like, oh That's not God, how yeah. it goes around here. So it's, uh, well, it's even I'm like, even when you're, yeah, well, even when you're working in, the party it's still work it's hectic Absolutely. you know so it's not like you're a party you know it's it's still a it's still work you know yeah <laughs> and, and i tell people work is work Absolutely. you know never try to never try to get away from work because i've been in the business for a long time i've been promotion ownership night you know nightclubs in the business for a long time and i always tell people like never try to run away from the work because right. it's work yeah <laughs> the, uh, don't think you're gonna come up here and run away from the work by you know by dancing around dancing around this totally. venue no it's still work yeah, I tell a lot of people like, make no mistake. Yeah, I, you know, I shake hands with everybody at the show. I take all the, you know, the photo op pictures. But it's yeah. literally like less than as soon as that show's <laughs> done, I sign the paperwork, <laughs> sign the paychecks. I'm right back in front of my computer preparing the work. For so the I got, I got a funny thing. Like I've, I've developed this little, uh, 
this little habit. And, and, and really, it, it's outside of the club now. It's like, I move very fast. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, literally, I walk fast. Yeah, you yeah. do. I don't, I, don't stand, I don't stand in one position at the same time. Yep. Because everyone's trying to talk to you, and I just don't give them the chance. To, yeah. like, I don't give them the chance to. Because, it's like, everyone, you know, obviously, if you're the Top Gun, everyone wants to, everyone wants to be in your ear. Everyone yeah. wants to talk to you. Yeah. Everyone, everyone wants to tell you a story and pitch you a business idea. So I just yeah. developed this right. thing. Tell you how I'm, much they love I'm you. I'm, like, always busy. Even if I have nothing to do for the next 15 minutes but watch the bar, I'm always moving. I'm like, okay, I got to, you know, I got to do something. I got to get over here. I got to get over here. You know what and I, I just learned? developed. And that goes my, like I cannot stop doing that outside of the business. It's like, do you do that too, John? No. Well, I, what I've learned is like as this company gets bigger and bigger, as Groove International gets larger, uh, there the more and more people that want to sit down and have dinner <laughs> with me. But as it gets larger and larger, the less time I have to sit right. down and have dinner with. What's people. that? Tony Robbins so said that like, he's like he's like well, you know when I needed food, nobody wanted to buy me a free <laughs> meal. He's like, but now I'm a millionaire and everybody's trying to buy me dinner. That's and, right. uh, and, and exactly. And the funny thing about specifically the live entertainment industry too is you can learn how important somebody is by how very little time <clears> or as much time you know it depends on you know how. More Depends on who you are. How I have time, time for you, John Avila. So you call have, me, oh, I'm shutting you. down everything. But you, you can learn how important <laughs> somebody is by like how little or as much time they have to spend with you on the phone. Like there's some people that have so much work to do, they'll pick up the phone, they'll be like, "Cool, this date, rad. Okay, cool. Thank you. You know what to do. See ya." Like it's. I've like developed that so also. I'm like, point. get to the point. I'm like, you know, you have people that call you, they want, and they're just very long winded. Yeah, and I'm like, and, and people say, "Wow, you're you're very short, Sydney." I'm like, "No, I just don't have a lot of time." Right. I'm like, yeah, yeah, well, I, I need to get to the point when I'm listening. I'm open ear. I got it. Let's go. Let's well, do it. Alternatively, you can learn how important you are by seeing how much time those people are willing to spend with you yeah, on true the phone. That, true so they're indeed, just like, true you can indeed. tell they're always busy, but if they're making time for you, anyway, just a little random things that. Yeah, I it took me a month to get you on the phone when we were doing <laughs> that. We were planning my book well, release party. And it, it better not it take. It better not take a month. When I, when I, <laughs> John, when I call you, you better pick up. Uh, when, I, when you call me, I'm just I will saying. No, this up. was before <laughs> I was a radio host. This is back oh, okay, when okay, I hadn't okay, even published okay. my book. Oh, yet. Okay, okay. Now okay. I get John on the phone. It's come a lot. Go, 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 go. I. I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> <laughs> you are right. Well, no, Jared and I go back. I, he's of actually, well, he remembers hell. I didn't even, well, eventually I got out of that car, lost that car while I was still bu- building that business. But around that time was when I was, uh, well, no, no, no. You and I saw it after, after I started the company. Yeah, I you. I forgot how long we've known each other, but you've always been. You let, know, me very strong strong let me tell you something, John. Let me tell you something, I do. He's I love, people I I love those Aww. stories. I love the <laughs> stories at the bottom more than I love the stories at the top. That's just me. You know, because I, you know, it's sh- it it shows me who you are. When I talk to people, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, don't tell me about your success. I really, I'm like, tell me about where you've been. You know, tell me, about, tell exactly. me about the challenges, because that that's telling me about you. You know, so and, and, and what you're made of and who you are. I don't want to know what made your business succeed. I want to know what made it fail. <laughs> right. And I want to take notes on everything that made it fail, so I don't make the same mistakes. Yeah, but of course, yeah. you're talking about like the personalities. At the yeah, I'm just you going know, on a rant here. exactly. <laughs> but, you know, like, so are we gonna get this freestyle? Now? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh. So, hey man, even even if it's not all the way off the cuff, just you know, remember one of the raps you said back in the day. <laughs> do you? Uh, well, actually, you're you're the one who who is enticing me to do this, so I'll go ahead and say you should go first. Oh, my name is Sid Money, and I'm cold correct. All others just flee when I jump on the set. My lyrics are creative and always shocking. My rhymes are guaranteed to keep your body rocking. My intellect is mandatory like the final rule. And I'm down with the posse and I will keep schooling. I'm qualified and I can't only increase. Checking out the party people said money says peace. Nice. And the crowd goes wild. I can't believe I haven't done this in years. Come on now. Lay down the beat. Actually, I could do an acapella. I got that. I got acapella. Because you're it. whack, Jared. I do stick not- with it. Put oh, my I've best. never done this before, okay? <laughs> I stick with it. Put my best in rhyme. So quick to spit lyrics. Who's the next in line? Ooh. A big critic who gets so sick with it and grip the six figures with no stress in oh. line. There's no stress, man. Face it up. My stress is trying to find time just to shave my nuts. Oh. Commercial rappers are stooping so low. They got a dope song with who you don't know. I got a pen and a pad. I get to spit for days. If uh, I get right as block, I just skip the page. Oh. Comes to showtime, I got a clip that waits to rob the sound tech right on center stage. Uh, Blitz the waist. There's no cover in the back. I haven't slept for days, man. What's up with that? That's all I got right now. Whoa! So. On that note, <laughs> damn. On that note, damn. half of my clients. Talk about like, shutting the show down. 
<laughs> yeah, no, like on that last one, it kind of got a little Eminem vibe there. It, John, John, tell yeah, us, well, where, tell, tell, tell uh, the listeners out there where they, where they can find you. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can't find my music anymore. Well, I guess if you look hard enough, don't look for my music. Uh, my name is John Avila. I work with Groove International. Uh, we're an incredible company. Check us out at soundthegroove.com, uh, Facebook slash Sound the Groove. Everything's Sound the Groove. Sound the Groove. It's an incredible company to work with. We've got an amazing staff. Don't know where I'd be without them. Definitely check us out. And where can we much. find more freestyling? That's what I want. <laughs> That's what I want to hear. Yeah, dude. You know what's F, funny? F your company. Where's the, where's the last, freestyles at? Last time I performed, I actually opened up for Bone Thugs and Harmony. Bam. It was uh, what? It is, right? Yo, it was awful. What? Get at John Avila, Groove International Sound Groove. Support and support his business because that's what we're all about. We're all about support and moving forward in the evolution of ourselves yeah. and our world that we live in. Well, not just support. I mean, it's awesome. Like, that's one of the cool things right. about your business model is you don't have to go out to your shows because you're like, oh, hey, he's my friend and I should do this. Like, you go out because you know you're going to have a good time. And you're like, oh, shit, Groove's throwing a party? Fuck yeah. yeah and it's only known. because he's awesome that I said support. We're known as, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We're known as the crazy ones now. We threw a toga party and people came wrapped in American flags to the show. Like, I love it. Not, like, like House of Blue San Diego was just like, okay, it's going to get a little wild. They're toga parties. And they're like, just make sure. They're like, we, we can't guarantee that they're going to be wearing stuff under the togas. Just be careful. Well, and it's I'm a like, toga party. It. We're going right. to roll with fuck it. Fuck it at that point. The less is more. <laughs> so <laughs> less is more. Scooby-Doo toga. I'll, I'll send you the photo. It's nuts. Anyway, I'm rambling. But yes. Nuts. No pun intended. Oh, no, no, no. That's <laughs> awesome. I, I really, honestly, like, I keep going back to the rap thing. I'm like, dude, that's awesome. Like, All right, get should, off the rap uh, thing, You should man. lay down a track. Get off the rap thing. Why? Man. Why? He's why do, trying, why he's do we move? He's trying to move from that. You see, he's turning all red. Why do we have to move from that? There came a point where I had to decide, am I going to focus on my music or am I going to focus on this company and I right. decided to focus on this company Bam. so I've yeah but I mean things I wrote that I remember but that's about it I I still think that there's a possibility for you out there in the world there's you know what's funny we every now and I know we're cutting it to the end here but there every now and then we do a hip-hop show because again we don't do hip-hop shows we just do them once every now and then in San Diego and every now and then there's a hip-hop artist who looked into the guy that booked them that's like, right far enough and I, I swear, to, there's this guy who walks up to me at a show, and he's just like, hey, man. And I'm like, what's up? You doing okay? Like, is everybody treating you well? And he's like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean? And he's just like, I so, know what you uh, did six years ago. <laughs> you got a, he's like, you got a pin and a pad. You can spit for days, huh? And I'm just like, who the fuck told you this? <laughs> like, oh, so, my goodness. Who told you that? Craig, he lying. All right, right maybe once. There, I need yeah. the money. Somewhere out there, there's evidence of this. There's evidence. So. Dude, that's awesome and hilarious and great at the same time. Like I'm it's learning. Interesting. I love. I love when you. I'm when really you glad I made it to this show. Yeah. 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 Me too. Yeah, I'm really glad I made it to this show. I'm so glad you did. This end is fun. Saying, like, no, there was a possibility guy. he like, wasn't gonna be here because traffic is fucking nuts right it now. Is. It's yeah, and I was I was uh, on another production meeting for the TV show on him, and I was like, Ugh. Ooh, do we get to talk about that? Yeah, we get to talk about that. Uh, actually, we're gonna talk about that next week. We're gonna talk about gonna... Sydney Hall being on TV. We're, bre we're breaking of, it all out. One of one of the best uh, one of the best networks out there. So uh, make sure you tune in next week to get the full scoop on that. Yeah, that's Hell right. Yeah, man. That's right. Yeah. Well, I cool. know nothing about it, but congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. I like seeing good things happen. I've actually oh, hold up. No, hold up. I gotta mention it now. Oh, I'm I'm tripping. Okay, first of all, okay, it's Bravo. It's Bravo. It's Friends to Lovers on Bravo. New uh series coming out. Yeah. Um it starts on January twelfth, but we're doing a thirty minute preview special at ten thirty on Bravo this Monday, December fifteenth. So check that out. December fifteenth on Bravo this Monday. You're gonna see your boy on uh, on the tube, so check that out. But if you have any other questions, go to uh, hash, you know friends to lovers, friends to lovers, as in friends to lovers with the T O in the middle, not the two friends to lovers, and just Google Sydney Hall if you have any further. <laughs> Should if you can't, if you can't find man. anything, what's Jeez, that? Hire him as a spokesman, man. <laughs> but check, yeah. Yeah, check your boy out. Check your boy out Monday. But um, after that preview special, the uh, uh, next Thursday we're gonna be talking about that also. All the juicy That's little, right. all the juicy little details that happen and what uh what is to come for your boy in the show. Yeah, we're actually gonna be doing a full segment on that. We're gonna be having guests uh, from guests the, show, the show, yeah, cast members of the show, cast members on uh, on this show, and we're gonna be talking about the whole yeah. thing, the behind uh -huh. the scenes, nice. everything that went on during the show. Exactly. Well, it's friends to lovers, so you can imagine what the show is about. You know. Yeah. The uh, social experiment. Um, everybody's wanted to get with the. A everybody's been there, in the friend zone once. Right, how exactly. does it work when we and, actually? And, and, and wanted to get. And how does it work when you actually come uh, get out of the friend zone? You know that's in the book, right? I, I don't teach people how to deal with it. I don't teach people how it works, but I teach people how to get out. If you've been in the friend zone before, 
I can teach you how to get out. Well, of we got we got okay. We got to wrap we got to wrap that in next week's yeah, show. Yeah, we yeah. Wrap that in next week's show. All right, all right, dude. I'm excited now. And next week we, we, we have no, next week next week we also have uh, Light Watkins who wrote the book uh, The Inner Gym, and he's our guest next week. So that's gonna be fun. That's right. We're having the yoga. Yeah, yoga guru. Medita- Medita- yoga, yoga meditation. The Inner Gym is his book. Uh, Light Watkins, and uh, he does the Daily Meditator. Uh, yeah. DailyMeditator.com. We got a bunch of cool stuff yeah, coming yeah. up this so, week. Yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, tune in next month. week. Uh, nice. We'll be rapping to him. You know what I'm saying? Trying to figure out how we get the inside pumped. Yeah. No, awesome. Inner strength is so uh, monumentally important. Inner calm. That, you know, being there in the pocket, focused in the moment. That's right. All that awesome Save it stuff. for next week. Um, John, is there anything else? Uh, do you have a show, any shows coming up that you want to promote? We've got, uh, well, since we're in L.A., um, we do have a Sunday Funday Bash coming up. Ooh. It's a really popular show that we've been doing lately. Just absolute chaos. It's going to be on the main stage of House of Blues Sunset Strip. I'm uh, there. We've got some phenomenal bands from. Uh, do we get free tickets? Uh, the, you guys absolutely. We'll we'll figure that out. Huh. So and no, we, we'll figure <laughs> yeah. that out. I mean, yes, we'll it's get not free. free. It's not free because we're giving promotion. Don't give anything free. Uh, <laughs> we uh, but yeah, we've got the Sunday Fun Day Bash coming up at House of Blues uh, Sunset Strip on Sunday. This uh, Sunday? Yeah, it's. I think we got to go. Week is it? I yeah, think we got to go too. Well, 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 buy you all shots De- of whiskey. December fourteenth. And by you all, not everybody listening. I mean, like you guys. Right, we'll right. December December fourteenth, Sunday. House of Blues, yes, Sunday Fun Day. If you can't make that, are we there? December I think we're there. 18th, we're there. Me and Jared are there. Show in the foundation room, which me is and Jared are there. Yeah, so for our there. viewers out there, if you guys want to meet us, uh, me and Sydney yeah. in person, uh, we'll be at the House of Blues in West Hollywood on December 14th. What time does it start? Uh, the event runs from 7 until midnight. 7 until yeah. midnight, Sunday Fun Day. Whoa! Whoa. Yeah. Hope Saturday's not. You hectic. know what? I, I, I love. We also have a sexy Santa theme party. Which, oh, mm. I have your attention now, don't I? Yeah, yeah what's up with that one? Well, no, nothing gets me more than a fat man in a beard. <laughs> <laughs> he said sexy Santa. I'm going to say sexy, sexy Santa hat, so you just put porn on the hat. No, I'm kidding. The, uh, so we both shows are sexy Santa shows. So the, the Sunday Funday Bash is absolutely a sexy Santa party. But like... Because um, I'm looking for a girl. We're I'm also, single. No, if I'm you joking. can't make <laughs> Sunday, <laughs> on Thursday, we'll be in Foundation Room doing the exact same thing. But in Foundation Room, we'll be doing another. Uh, it's called Winter Wonderland. Is that the big room, Foundation Room? Foundation Room's the uh, third floor nightclub. The third floor, okay. So wait, Sunday okay. Fun Day's in the main room, the big so one. So we got Sunday Fun Day and then the Winter Wonderland thing. Those are on the same day? They're, oh, sorry. Sunday Fun Day, Sunday. Winter Wonderland is going to be in Foundation Club, and it'll be on, a, on Thursday. On Thursday? A week from today. Which I think hold up, to, hold up. I think over. we, I think we're probably gonna be there next week Thursday time, after the show. What time is that? Uh, that event runs from seven until I believe twelve thirty. So after the show, yeah. we're there on Thursday. Yeah, we might have to make this a regular thing if that's a regular. Thing. There it is, right? You can All right. Actually, normally our events go a lot longer, but it's it's winter season. I love it. So. I love winter mm-hmm. wonderlands. I'm from the East Coast. Cool. So we'll give it. you a hat when you come in. Right. Give me a drink when I come in. Give me a drink when I come in. I'm gonna stamp you on the forehead. <laughs> this, the international the symbol for for hat. <laughs> Good branding, everybody. All right, so we have uh, so we have two party dates, bro. Yeah. Uh oh. Uh oh. But yeah, man. Thanks for letting me. Of course, man. Here, man. Love having you on here. I, I love that we get to talk about no, this fun. for all fun of show. our young entrepreneurs out there. I know so many people have been down and they've struggled and they've they've met that that place in their life where you know they're confused. They don't know how to take the next step. And people approach me all the time on social media. Jared, how do I do this? How do I how do I bridge the gap? How do I take that next step? And it's like I honestly, everybody does it a little differently. But the just big, keep going. Just keep going. <laughs> Pick a direction and go. And people Keep go, going. well, what if I don't make that? Well, guess what? Then you're going to hit that wall and then you're going to bounce off that wall. You're going to keep going. But as long as you're moving forward, you're never going to know if that's going to be a problem until you get there. That's right. If ifs and ends of pots and pans, the world will be a skillet. I don't live by ifs. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, what are you, a quote machine? Guys? <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. Nice. Damn, on fire. So, yeah, I mean, to everybody out there, it's just like you got to have something, my desire, doom. passion, and to do it. And I think a lot of people have that passion. I think a lot of people don't end up, uh, you know, taking that jump. That We're human beings. We're born with the passion, man. Just harness it and go. Yeah, it's just fear. I want to hire this guy. <laughs> it's fear. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, cool. Uh, that's all for tonight, folks. Thanks for tuning in to Modern Mail Radio. Modern Mail Radio. The evolution continues. You're listening to Modern Mail Radio with Jared Zavistoski and Sydney Hall right here on LA Talk Radio.